<laughs> First thing I want to say is that no one gave me this printer. I bought it with my own money. Over the years, I've been offered dozens of them, but never took them up on it. And waited until now, where I thought the technology was mature enough that I'd be getting a reliable machine. And if you want to know details on the one that I bought, you'll find that in the video description. Anyway, as soon as I got the machine, I started thinking of things that I could be doing with it. And one of the first projects that I thought I should make with it would be a clamp. Over the years, I've made lots of clamps. And one of the ones I made a long time ago was the traditional hand screw clamp. So that's what I'm starting with here. I thought it would print the lead screws and the nuts, but make the jaws from wood. And that's what I'm doing right here. And of course, while I was doing this, I was thinking up other things that I could be doing with it as well. And so while the printer was printing, I was actually designing other things that I could make with it. Because this is more or less just a test, I'm using softwood for the jaws, but that should be strong enough. And I'll cut it to size and drill the pivot holes through. And then I also need to make slots that the lead screws will fit through and allow them to move back and forth. And I'm doing that on my router table with a half inch bit. And while I was at it, I took the off cut left over from making the jaws and cut it in half to make the handle. Now with that done, I wanted to get the lead screws glued together, but I didn't have any super glue, so I used my old favorite polyurethane construction adhesive, and this turned out to be a bit of a mistake. But it wasn't because it was not strong enough, and I'll show you why that is later in the video. So as you can see, each screw is made up of three pieces, and that's for strength, and the spline that goes down the middle is for alignment. And also, when you're using a 3D printer, you have to keep in mind that it has grain. So it's a lot like wood in that regard. And it's going to be stronger along the grain than it is across the grain. So you want to print things that need to be strong along the length with the grain. And that's what I did with these. So I'm screwing on the half nuts here to keep the threads aligned and also actually to act as clamps. And I set that aside to dry. And while I was drying, I finished shaping the handles and got those ready to glue on as well. And then I started on one of those projects that I designed while I was waiting for the printer to print before. I thought I would make an enclosure for the printer now that I know how useful it can be. And I thought I could do that in an interesting way by making 3D printed parts that would join wooden parts together. And the wood that I'm using here is a piece of cherry. So it's going to be a snappy looking enclosure for sure. 
And the idea here is to cut pieces that are three quarters of an inch square. So it'd be like a framework that's joined together by the specially printed parts. And here's another project that I actually printed in the meantime. It's what I'm calling my no snag sanding block. And I'm using that to sand those squares. And here's another one, actually, a smaller one. And when I printed the parts, I also print this drill guide that slips on the end. And this will help guide the drill bit into the end of the stock. So it's drilling it centered and keeping it in line. And here are those parts I'm talking about. I made several different types for different parts of the enclosure. You can see they go together and then they slip into the hole. Now using that guide again, I can use that to drill the hole in the side. I'm using my homemade VIX bit. And some of these squares get rounded over. And the one at the top on the front is more rounded than the other one. So I have to do a little hand planing. And I need to countersink where the pins go in to hold the corners on. And I'm using more construction adhesive again to do that because I still don't have any super glue. Although super glue would be better. And then while that was drying, I went out to the shop and I cut the pieces of plexiglass and that will make up the side panels and the top panel. And this has been kicking around my shop for the past 10 years and here's a very satisfying feel. So while I was cutting the panels, I realized that I made a mistake. I won't be able to fasten the panels using these clips that I made because the frames are already assembled. So I had to design and print new clips that mount from the outside. And that's what you see here. And those go right on the corner of the panel. And here I'm removing that little bit there. I know that would drive some people absolutely crazy to see that little bit sticking out. So I'm taking my time and cutting it off. And here you can see I got some super glue and a little bit in the hole and the pin in there. And these also can be fastened with screws, which is probably a better way to do it because you may have to take it apart. Once again, I'm drilling those screw holes with my homemade VIX bit I made a few years ago. Oh, and here's an interesting project that I also made in the meantime. This is a no screw vise that I designed a few years ago and decided it would be the perfect thing to 3D print. And I'm using that to hold the frame while I attach these clips that will hold the front door and the top door in place when the thing closes. One screw to fasten it and then a bead of super glue will keep it from twisting. Now here's the problem with my clear plastic. Like I said, it was beating around the shop for a few years and it got scratched up and I didn't know it. And I used the worst piece for the front panel. But I've got an idea for fixing that and I'll show that later. Once again, I'll clamp that in my super vise. And here I'm attaching some interesting 3D printed parts. These are blade hinges and they go on the corners of the top and front so that it hinges like that. And I also made other hinges, regular butt hinges, but wrap around the back panel. So I got that put on, then I had to take it off again <laughs> because I actually put it on the front door and not the top. So back to the printer again, you can see what I made to cover that scratch on the front panel. Mr. Happy and some spots of super glue will hold him in place. And he hides that scratch nicely. When you have a 3D printer, everything looks like plastic. So I made the handle as well. And here I'm putting it together and you can see this is a side panel that gets 
more hinges put on from the side so that the sides actually open up. I wanted to be able to get at the machine easily so the top opens with the front and then the sides can swing open as well. Flip it over and put the other side on which will also be hinged. Now I need a way to hold that door open and it's not the most elegant way I'll admit but it works. I added a wooden strip on the back that sticks up high enough to add a clip to the top to hold the door in the open position. And here you can see how the side panels open up. Now I had one other thing to do before I could put the enclosure in place and that was to drill a hole big enough on the back for the cord to come through. I'm doing all this work in my kitchen so I'm trying to stay ahead of the mess too. And here it goes down over the printer and it's a perfect fit. So with the enclosure in place I printed some more parts for some other projects that I dreamed up. One of those is my ever popular compact compass and that's what you see printing here along with half of a new insert plate for my table saw. And here's that clip on the top operating, making a very satisfying click. Oh, and back to the hand screw clamp, and I'll talk about why you don't want to be using polyurethane construction adhesive. I left it too long, and it's set up too hard and it's stuck to the outside of the threads and really made them hard to turn. And here I'm showing how the jaws and the handles actually can be 3D printed as well, which is an excellent option. I think it's more than strong enough for light duty, for holding things. That's mostly what you would use that clamp for anyway. And those go together with these specially printed dovetail splines that hold it together and lined up while the glue sets. I'm going to end this video with a few pictures of some other projects that I designed and made using the 3D printer. I've been busy over the past month, as you can see.